Hello, friends, peeps, pals, and everybody watching my video. Today I'm going to talk about a little issue called digital rights management. I don't have a big, long speech prepped, and I actually didn't even feel like making this vid. Not until I kept hearing more people talk about it. It's in the news this week. It's everywhere right now. Digital rights management is pretty much the developers and publishers maintaining control. Uh, and it's a controversial plan. It's maintaining control of your game while you play it. Virtually, that is what it summarizes and describes your online experience tailored to a single game. Now, in the past couple of months, we've had plenty of games doing this. In fact, this goes... this really transcends a couple of years from Assassin's Creed 2, way back when, to Street Fighter 4's PC version. Uh, that didn't actually happen because fans really forced their vocal opinion down Christian Spenson's throat who was going to do so. If you can check back on the Capcom forums, the PC version of Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition was supposed to have had this DRM, which would have required a constant connection to the internet. And it wasn't until several Capcom and very loud Capcom fans protested it by declaring that pirates would have a little legitimate experience by comparison. What this means is that pr pretty much anybody cracking on an illegal, an illegal version and downloading that can circumvent the DRM anyway. This means is supposed to be used to prevent piracy, but what it really does is force the player into a degree of submission where they could grab a limited number of downloads only through a company website, or they would always, like I said, require a constant online connection just to play a game. This was alleged to happen in the next-gen consoles, but uh, lucky there that, that nothing really went through. And then, as of recently, we had Diablo 3, and something I really noticed about this game, I am not a big fan of these types. I just don't really care that much. I don't explore them. I, and I do have a bit of anger, and I'm not that much of a passionate fan of SimCity or Diablo, but uh, one problem I do have is Diablo 3 with all of these insane issues just because of the online connectivity and all these articles coming out about these developers celebrating what they've done, mission accomplished, let's get some champagne, and the same night that they've screwed over the customer, which is now what Electronic Arts, of course, being Electronic Arts, is gonna do. And this time you can really separate the developers because uh, before this was Blizzard's idea to force you uh, to submit to their online ruling. With Electronic Arts, they've decided to implement it in SimCity, and not a lot of people have taken kindly to this. In fact, I'm going to click over here and show you. Uh, the developers actually have a letter. I will leave a link down in the description. Uh, of course, this is anonymous, because if, you know, if your name is actually out there and you're writing this, people are going to think, Oh my god, he's trying to help the consumer! Ah! We, we, we have to blacklist him. We can't have him... Uh, be a danger to us, a danger to our business practices. Anyway, this is what the guy said. Once again, he is anonymous. To the executives at Electronic Arts, from one of your employees, I am deeply embarrassed by the troubled launch of SimCity, and I hope you are too. When I walk around our campus and look at the talent we've collected, the amenities we have access to, and the opportunities working at such a big company affords us, I can't imagine how for release after release EA continues to make the same embarrassing anti-consumer mistakes. We should be better than this. You should not be failing us so badly. Another thing I see when I walk around our campus are massive banners that display what are said to be our company values. They are posted on every floor included in company-wide emails and hanging above the cafeteria in bright colors. You even print them on our coffee mugs so we see them every day. But somehow, when planning the launch of SimCity, you threw them all out the window. More importantly, the values you are ignoring is think consumers first. What part of the SimCity DRM scheme which has rendered the game unplayable for hundreds of thousands of fans across the globe? Okay, you know what? I'm going to interrupt right here. Uh, I did not forget to mention this, but this goes... this can go without saying. When you play a DRM game, not just yourself or your family is logging in to enjoy it, thousands, maybe millions of people around the world, depending on how popular, how hot this intellectual property is. When too many people try to log into the servers, everything crashes and renders this product unusable. You cannot play it because everyone else wants to. And this is a double-edged sword, at least in EA's mind. 
Electronic Arts actually has an article saying that too many people want to enjoy the DRM. That they actually love the game so much that everyone's trying to log it, and that's why they're having trouble with it. Not because of this stupid connection-based system. It's like, it doesn't matter what happens, they're gonna try and spin it another way. They can't afford to disappoint their investors. They can't admit that they look bad. For some reason, you, actually, you know what? If they did admit uh, what, you know, the injustice to gamers that they've committed here, um, they may actually look better, for being honest. But no, that's not the way a company can work. Uh, we have to hide our own shame. Like a dog going out without a bag. <laughs> or any animal. But, uh, moving on. Most important of the values you are ignoring is think consumers first. What part of the SimCity DRM scheme, which has rendered the game unplayable for hundreds of thousands of fans across the globe, demonstrates that you are thinking about consumers before you are thinking about yourselves? Does first mean something different in boardrooms than it does to the rest of us? Does the meaning of that word change when you get the word executive in front of your title? You can't pretend that you didn't know consumers would be angry about this. Common sense aside, consumers complained about this during your public betas. In fact, when one of them presented his criticisms on the forums, he was banned! He tried to silence your critics. The same thing is happening now as users write in to demand refunds. What part of this behavior aligns with our company value as to be accountable? What you've done demonstrated with this launch is that our corporate management does not believe in our core values. They are for unwashed masses, not for important people who force this anti-consumer DRM onto the SimCity team. This DRM scheme is about the consumers, not about the consumers, I'm sorry, or even about piracy. It's about covering your own asses. It allows you to ha hand we wave weak sales or bad reviews and blame outside factors like pirates or server failures in the event the game struggles. You are protecting your own jobs at the expense of consumers. I think this violates the act with integrity value I'm looking at uh, at my own coffee mug right now. On behalf of your other employees, I'd like to ask you to fix this. Allow the SimCity team to patch the game to run offline. If create quality and innovation is still a core value that you believe in, then this shouldn't be a hard decision. Games that gamers can't play because of server overload or ISP issues are not quality. Be bold by giving the consumers what they want and taking accountability for the mistake. Finally, I'd like to ask you to follow the last company value on the list in the future. Learn and grow. When you made this mistake with Spore, the company and all your employees suffered for it. You didn't learn from that mistake and you're making it again with SimCity. So please, learn from this debacle. Don't do this again. Grow into better leaders and actually apply our company values with you when you make decisions. Don't just use them as tools to motivate your staff. With the money, talent, and intellectual property available to Electronic Arts, we should be leading this industry into a golden age of consumer-focused game publishing. Instead, we're the most reviled game publisher in the world. That's your fault. Things can only change if you actually start following the company values and apply them to every title we launch. Sincerely, a disappointed but hopeful artist at ears. E-A-R-S. Ah, okay. I didn't actually have to read that, um, but hey, don't take my word for it. Uh, this is actually well scribed and uh, well written in order to try and get across the thick-headed business morons at Electronic Arts. Uh, a lot of publishers, I don't even know how these people make it to the management positions or to the upper employment as they do. Like, these people cannot seriously be the boss and do this. Uh, it's all very puzzling to me, but there is one more detail I like to take into account. The writing here re mentions review scores. Review scores, as far as I have seen, never take the digital rights management problem into account. And what I mean is that they never take off a certain amount of points for this fiasco. If this renders a game unplayable, a massive amount of points should be taken off for digital rights management for this DRM. And I wish there were other names, too, for this uh, program. I am i honestly don't have any specific uh, reviewers that I have a grievance against for not giving this a low score, because some of them are even withholding their reviews and are waiting for the servers to stabilize to actually fin uh, finish drafting it. And that's my biggest problem. They can't just write off this game as bad because the experience is bad, 
and EA willfully will not allow you to enjoy the game as it was intended to be. In fact, based on what I am seeing here, they were originally going to uh, release it without the internet uh, internet debacle. But instead, Electronic Arts, you know, the higher management, forced them to do this. What I don't like about what this company does, it's like when Disney bought Marvel, yes, there are a few problems left and right, yeah. Uh, everybody had their worries, and yeah, I know, stuff is terrible. But at least Disney doesn't touch all of Marvel's properties and tells them what to do, alright? Even though one owns the other, both companies are still very successful and both are simply divided and left alone. And anything that intertwines and crosses over is really just optional. You don't see uh, Disney telling Marvel to write this story in a specific way or to throw out the fucking... Uh, trade paperbacks and cartoons yeah yeah i know about the cartoons but but that that like i'm just saying one company can own another without dominance and destroying the property you know basically changing a form of art if we're talking about integrity here reviewers need to start taking into account and, and it shouldn't be just this game i mean everybody's acting like this is a new problem or that this is just something to to be aware of and to be angry and to retaliate. No, this has been going on for years. Why the hell did we wait over, I don't know, 10, 20, maybe 100 different games? The few that I mentioned are just the few out of the many I could talk about. And I won't blame a particular... I, I can't even call these people companies. I mean, what is IGN anymore? Just uh, They're just a bunch of reviewers who got famous through shock value. I don't know. Okay, I'd rather be happier with gaming, but yeah, this developer speaks the truth. We need to stop this. We need to be able to disconnect the, uh, this online. I need to be able to play my game without worrying about servers. Unless you're a mo massive multiplayer online role-playing, you know, MMO. Uh, Final Fight Double Impact should not have this problem. Uh... That's why we have Steam, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I don't need Steam in order to play my games. Like, I mean, they're on there. Uh, but I can also open Devil May Cry 4 or Darksiders 2 in my window in my desktop over under Start. And you, then you just click on the game. I don't need to go to some kind of online service. I don't need to go to any of those places, Steam or whatnot, just to access a game. That's kind of the point of purchasing my stuff, because it's mine. Legally, I own it. When I buy a video game, or any product really, I want a sense of control, because I paid for it. I don't think it's unreasonable, and I don't know how many people are going to agree or disagree. Just imagine how much better gaming could be if the company actually listens to the customers. Now, as I said earlier, I do not hold a grudge against SimCity and its developers. In fact, I feel very bad for them because it may be a good game. And I like to try different games. I like to try something new that I haven't touched before. But if this is, you know, worse comes to worse, this studio will probably end up closed down and EA will throw them out of a job because that's what they do. They buy out developers, keep the intellectual properties, do nothing with them except keep them in the phase of limbo and throw out the people who made it to be in the streets without a, a food, a bed, and a place to sleep. That's who these people are. They're corporate. They don't have to think. And I'm not agreeing with that, I'm saying. In their minds, they don't have to think of who they're supposed to be helping. They just want your money. They do, they do this with your sports games. They do this with Dead Space and the microtransactions. Ugh. I'll say it again. Get rid of digital rights management. And for those of you who refuse, who are probably listening to this video, if you're making a game and you still incorporate it, I personally would love to see reviewers take a massive amount of, like, lower your scores, pretty much. That's what they need to do. They need to convince, like, the media is a big voice, unfortunately, for gamers. It's like, it's kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, you do see people talking about this. On another, you don't really see them acting out. You just see them not doing anything and, and promising to get back to the game later. We could be so much better if we really brought